I want you to start every day. I want you to get up in, your li- in the morning and I want your life to be centered around the confession. It's Jesus that lives here. And no matter what's going on, thank God, thank Father that you get to be right in the center of his will. No matter what's going on. No matter what's going on. You learn how to walk in the center of God's will no matter what's going on. No matter, it doesn't matter if you don't have anything. It doesn't matter if you've got the worst clunky car on the, on the, on, on the road. It doesn't matter if you live in a tent. It doesn't matter what your condition of your life is. There's something that is so much bigger than that that you are just so rich. You feel so rich, so wealthy in God. <laughs> so abundantly supplied. Hallelujah. People, when, you, when, uh, when Jesus Christ is all that you need, then at that moment in time, you are freed and liberated to begin to forget not all the benefits. Until Jesus is everything, self will hold you in a prison and you can't remember one good thing. Hardly. Somebody's got to come remind you. I'm here to tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit is here to talk to us and to teach us. He's here to guide us. I'm going to talk to you tonight. I'm going to have my dear friend, Dr. Bal Krishna Sharma, come and minister a little while. And... Uh, but I'm going to talk to you tonight about being swept into the current of the Spirit. I'm going to talk to you tonight about as many people are sons of God are swept into the current of the Spirit. Wow, isn't that? Hallelujah. She said, I gave you authority to be sons of God. And he says, as many as are sons of God are swept into the current of the Spirit. I know you say, what verse of scripture is that? It's Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And actually that passage of scripture allows us to say as many as are sons of God are led by the Spirit. We can say it either way. It's found both ways in the Western and the Alexandrian traditions. And a third way in the majority text tradition. Hallelujah. And they all write. Because no matter how you say, you ask any Greek scholar, say, should we translate this scripture as men as are led by the Spirit or guided by the Spirit of the sons of God? Or should we translate it as men as are sons of God or led by the Spirit? And they're going to get a big question mark. What's wrong with you? Either way is equal. I think that sometimes we think, oh, you know, as men as are led by the Spirit, they're the sons of God. And I must not be the son of God because I don't see I'm being led by the Spirit. So I just want to make it definite. You are a son of God, and therefore you're granted the privilege to be led by the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking about swept into the current of God. I'm talking about caught in the current. Huh? And can't get out. Amen. Pretty radical, eh? Ah! And when you begin, when you begin to move in the faith of it, I think too many people hear the word wrong. They hear the word, they don't hear the word right. Jesus was constantly giving the Shema to Israel. Shema Israel. And it meant to hear right, take heed, hear right. I think too many people hear wrong. They don't hear the privilege and the, com- and the command and the empowerment. They hear like this legalistic responsibility and obligation, you know. Will you just pray for our frailty and inability of words to speak? Because I'm telling you right now, and even more, you pray for your ability to hear. Let every man take heed how he hears. Hallelujah. See, all you got to do is to take a hold of what Father's freely given. He's given freely sonship. He's freely given it. And as many as receive it, there's some people that look at it and go, wow, that's just impossible. That can't, how can that even be? How can that even be? How can it even be that we should be classified as sons of God? We're not classified as sons of God as Adam was, the son of God. We're not classified as sons of God as angels, seraphims, cherubims, and the rest of the angels. We're classified as sons of God by the only definition that it now exists as a son of God, and that's Jesus Christ, the only begotten son of God, for we are in him and outside of him we don't even exist in God. I'm going to tell you right now. People want to be able to exist in God, be known by God, and try to stand outside of Jesus Christ. There is no existence outside of Jesus Christ. We are in him and he is in us. Are we dead while we live? He that hath, he that possesses, he that has the Son, Jesus Christ, has life. We in him, and he's in us. Amen. Amen. Paul, come here. Man, I'm telling you, I, 
It is wonderful. It's, it's absolutely such a blessing to me to have him here. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I've been working on, I've been working on my Indian accent. <laughs> I've been trying to speak Indian <laughs> so I can come to the Hindi people and be able to communicate better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, these kind of things happen to you when you get drunk in the Holy Ghost, you know, but I mean, it really, it's actually, it helps when you have a little bit of an accent. <laughs> Amen. No, it is, hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Jesus, for the yeah. nation of Nepal. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, the nation of Nepal is so strategically positioned. It's positioned between the two greatest people groups right now on the planet, the largest populations on the earth, India and China. And then furthermore, it is so strategically positioned in some of the most radically unreached people groups with Bhutan on the east and Kashmir on the, on the west. And thinking about the northeast region of India, it is unique from all other India. These are, these are people that, are, that have really, by and large, never really heard or seen the presentation of the gospel. And I'm talking about like that Jesus showed up. And I, we're here to talk to you tonight and encourage you tonight that God the Father is purposed to, to have Jesus Christ show up to all the world around you through you. And I'm telling you, I want you to understand there is a way, a manner of faith, a receptivity that is going to make that a living reality. And I want you to just tonight, some of you, you're carrying a bunch of burdens, you're carrying a bunch of problems, uh, you're carrying a bunch of, of, of earthly concerns, and, and we're not going to worry about who created them and who made them. We're just going to encourage you tonight to forget about it. Uh -huh. To lay out that, lay that thing aside, forget about it. Forget about it. If you were to die right now, it would absolutely have no meaning or value to you whatsoever. So just go ahead and die right now and live in Jesus and let it have no meaning or value. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen. amen. And then a couple of you need to smile. And then I would just go ahead and lay hands on you and let you see you get drunk in the Holy Ghost, man. <laughs> so, huh? Everybody just receive right now. Jesus, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for leading us, and thank you for this opportunity. I'll just read a passage from the book of Acts, chapter 2, 17 to 21. Acts 2, 17 to 21. Acts, chapter 2, reading verse 17 to 21. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So this passage, as we know, talks about the move of the Spirit. And as in the day of Pentecost, when something happened, when people gathered together, people from all directions gathered together in Jerusalem, and they saw something happen on the day of Pentecost, that they could not understand by their human mind. So when people are wondering what was happening, and it was Peter who gives the explanation of what happened on the day of Pentecost. Peter 
as we know, he comes back from his backsliding stage and he receives the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost when they were praying and that is being found in chapter 2. And after that, he gives a message. He preaches a message and he tells to the people, in the last days, God is going to do wonderful things, signs and miracles. In the last days, God is asking every person to be involved in his work. We are filled by the Spirit of God. We are empowered by His Spirit to live a life that is acceptable to Him, a holy life. At the same time, we are filled by the Spirit to take the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Amen. The twofold purposes. The filling of the Spirit of God is to be like Jesus Christ in our own lives. At the same time, taking the life of Jesus Christ to the world outside. And Peter says, in the last days. So what is, when is that last days? Peter was saying, we are living in the last days. And the preachers today also say, we are living in the last days. When is that last day? Yeah, the last day began when the Holy Spirit came upon the church. And the last day will continue until the church is raptured. So this is called the last day. Whether the time of Peter or time 200 years ago, 500 years ago, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 10 years ago, yesterday, today, and until Jesus Christ comes, it is the time of the Spirit of God. It is the age of church, age of grace. It is the age of the power of the Holy Spirit. And Peter says, in the last days, God is sending his spirit. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. I'll pour out my spirit. I will give them life. Because the spirit is always relates to life. A life that can understand who God is. A life that can experience the love of God into their lives. In the last days, God is pour, going to pour out His Spirit upon people. He's going to transform them. He's going to change them. God is going to make people like Himself, like Jesus Christ. In the last days, the Spirit is going to be poor. And as we have been hearing, as Pastor Mark says, we need anointing of the Lord. And I was many times before, you know, praying about what do I, what do we understand by anointing? And the Lord revealed to me, and there, there are maybe scriptural passages, anointing is like when we put a, a lamp, oil lamp, we pour oil into it, and we put a, a lamp, and we, we, uh, we, we put uh, the fire. It keeps on burning. Once the light is burned, the oil is being reduced. The more the lamp is burning, the oil is reduced. So we don't need to wait to the last moment of finishing the oil. The oil can be poured at all times. Yes, that is called anointing. So for anointing, we don't need to reach to the last, you know. Last stage, we don't need to reach. We can be filled all the time. Hallelujah. The more the light is burning, the more the light is burning, the sooner the oil will be consumed. And oil of the Spirit has to be poured again and again and again and again. So there is anointing is all the time. 
It's not just one time I'm anointed, finished. No. <laughs> because if I'm used of God, I'll burn more. Yeah. As I burn more, I give more light to the people. Yeah. As I give more light to the people, I need more filling of the Spirit. Yeah. If I don't burn at all, I may not be needing and the oil will simply go away. I need to be born, give light to the people. Once I give more light, I need more anointing because I'll be consumed. I'll be used of God. And when I'm used of God, God has to fill me all the time. The Spirit has to fill me, empower me. And in the last days, the Spirit, God is giving that Spirit. God is pouring out His Spirit. God is anointing through His Spirit. To whom? To the whole household. The ministry of the church is not just one or two people's work. It is the whole congregation involving in the ministry of the Lord. Yes. Church. Church is a body of Christ. Every one of us is responsible to bring people into God's kingdom. Into God's kingdom. Yes. Because the filling of the Spirit has a very, very, very strong emphasis on taking the gospel. Mission. Filling of the Spirit. Because... God gives us gifts to use for people. God gives us gifts to accelerate the work of God. Yes. Signs and wonders and gifts are given basically for the manifestation of God's kingdom. Yes. So the Spirit of God is anointing us Anointing the whole household. So you can see here, from Joel, Peter is quoting, and he said, the sons and daughters will prophesy. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young man will see visions, and your old man will see dreams. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Of course, Prophecy has two dimensions. One is the present dimension. The other one is future dimension. Even to tell about the saving grace of Christ to the people is a prophecy. Because we are prophesying in the lives of people that people need to be changed. So there is a foretelling and forth telling. Forth telling is something we declare the word of God in the lives of people. And Bible says your sons and daughters will prophesy. They will speak of the greatness of God and people will come to know him. Your sons and daughter, your whole household, and even here, people who work for you. People who are employed in your offices, in your factories, if you are a businessman or other kinds of things, even those people are called to serve God. Yes. yes. We, whole household, it is not just one father or mother serving God or children serving God. It's the whole household serving God. When the Spirit of God's God comes upon us, it is we who serve him. And it is the young people who see visions. They see something that is not yet there. Vision is something, like I sometimes give example, we see a tree and fruit in a mango seed. Mango, in mango seed, we see a tree. We see fruit. That is vision. And it will take time to come to that realization. But we keep on pressing. When God gives a vision, we keep on pressing without discouragement, praying and asking God, God will bring this in fulfillment. 
Hallelujah. That is vision. That is vision. We need to press on because there will be different kinds of attacks, discouragement, all kinds of things. And we'll not listen to those things. We'll listen to the voice of God and move forward. And God will fulfill. Your young people will see vision. Young people will see vision. They will see vision of God. They will see people transformed. It may not happen overnight everything, but as we claim the promises of God for his kingdom, God does. As I remember my own life and ministry, as I said in the morning, 76, very few people, very few churches, small churches, but God gave us the strength to trust in him. And what we see today in our own country is a miracle. What God is doing to bring a great transformation in the lives of people. Vision is something that God gives to us. And we need to continue trusting God to bring that vision into action. Today in our country, we have different kinds of meetings. We had crusade, you saw in the morning, and other kinds of meetings. We have meeting in our churches, youth meetings. Last year, from our, our churches, from different parts of our, our country, we had about, in different places, about 14,000 youth people gathered together. Not in one place, but several places. So one place I went, we had 3,000 young people. 3,000 in one meeting. And the place I was talking, in 1982 I went, we had five or six people in that place. Lot of persecution from the villagers. Lot of witch doctors there, see? But as we began to pray, as we began to ask God to heal people, to deliver people, people began to be touched by the power of the Spirit. People began to come to Christ, church began to grow. Even people, those who were doing all those witchcraft, witch doctors, finally became Christians. And in that place, there are more than 50 churches in that area. 3,000 young people gathered together. And we had three days of preaching and teaching and, and the power of the Spirit was working in a great way. We did not see those things at once. But we saw in a mango seed a big tree. Hallelujah. 30 years ago. God will do his work. We are simply instruments in his hand. We cannot do by ourselves. We need to trust in him. And that is what Peter is saying. In the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit upon people. It is the spirit of God that changes people's hearts. We, God uses us as an instrument, but it is He who transforms people's lives. And as Peter talks about, in the last days, the whole household will serve. Even on my servants, both men and women, your old man will dream, men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Men and women. We emphasize the ministry of both men and women. If we see our churches, I don't know, here, in our congregation, about 70% people will be women. 70%, only 30% men. That means 
if we say 70% women to keep quiet, only men do the ministry, I don't know how long it will take to complete the work of God. So we have, a, we have a students in our Bible college, about 50% are women. And we want to encourage men and women for the ministry of the Lord. Men and women. Because God has called them to the ministry. And they can be evangelists, they can be pastors, they can be prophets, they can do ministry of God. God is calling men and women to the ministry of God. And we are encouraging, and we have seen many women pioneering churches in our country. And they are better pioneering pioneers than even men. Yes. And Jesus says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Men and women will prophesy. They will do the ministry of the Lord. Jesus Christ has come to, to serve all humanity. And Peter, when he speaks the and he also says something. In the last days, there will be signs and miracles, wonders. God is going to bring people, deliver people through signs and wonders. This is a door for people to come to God's kingdom. And if we look at Bible, the ministry of Jesus Christ, we can see all of his ministries are associated with signs and wonders throughout the gospel. Wherever he went, there are signs and wonders of healing, deliverance. And that ministry brought people into God's kingdom. And Jesus also taught them how to live a Christian life. The signs and many wonders open the door wide open for the kingdom of God. And in Nepal, many people have come to the faith through signs and wonders and healing. Many parts of the country. When we pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, people are freed from their demon positions and sicknesses, all kinds of infirmities that they are carrying. And this is an everyday phenomena in our ministry. Every Saturday church service, we have people coming for prayer. And this spreads out. So people know that when Christians pray, God is healing them. So this is a testimony. And Peter says, in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Because the purpose of God is to bring people into his kingdom. To make them sons and daughters of his kingdom. To make his own children, bought by his own blood. Bring them back to the family that they have gone away. So when Peter says this one, then finally we, we see here, in the last days, signs and wonders is going to take place. And everyone who calls the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> everyone who calls the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. Eternally. Eternally. Will be saved in this life. The person's life becomes meaningful, purposeful. Why do we exist in this world? We have a meaning to exist, to glorify the name of the Lord. Yes. yes. Glorify the name of the Lord. 
to tell the good news of Jesus Christ to the people. To bring people in God's kingdom. That's our purpose. And anyone who calls the name of the Lord will be saved. There is no name under heaven given by which people can be saved without the name of Jesus Christ. His name is above all the names. And, Paul, and Peter giving this message and we see there are thousands of people gathered together on the day of Pentecost. Because there are two festivals which are very important for Jews. One was the Passover, other one was the Pentecost. And you can see two very important incidents happen in these two days. So God purpose, God's purpose is always wonderful. Because on the day of Passover, Jesus died. Because Roman government would have chosen to kill Jesus any time. Why did they wait for the day of Passover? Because God wanted to give a witness to a larger Jewish community who were scattered all over the world, who were required to come on the day of Passover in Jerusalem. It was a requirement for a Jew to come back to Jerusalem on the day of Passover feast, Passover, Passover meal. They were exempted only if they were sick. Otherwise, they had to come from India or Persia or anywhere. And when there was a big gathering of Jews in Jerusalem, that time, the king, the emperor, ordered Jesus to be hanged. Because even in his cross, Jesus was telling the message to the Jew that the prophecy has been fulfilled. Big group of Jews who could see Jesus being crucified. And the, the same group comes after 50 days. Most of them. Same group. And they saw Jesus being crucified, went back, maybe read book of Isaiah 53, interpreted into their hearts. When they came back, they were ready to receive Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God brings them back on the day of Pentecost. Wonderful thing happened there. And Peter has the opportunity to tell these people, you repent from your sin. You crucified Christ. He was very strong. And they said, we repent. 3,000 people baptized one day. Hallelujah. And these people, after the day of Pentecost, went everywhere, established churches. Because some of the churches that were established, even before Paul went, their church was there. So we can see the gospel was penetrated from the day of Pentecost when these people experienced the power of God. So today we have a great God and given great privilege by great God. And we have a message to tell to the world that Jesus gives life, hope, eternity. And people are searching for that. People are searching for that. And people need to find who Jesus is. And Bible tells us, those who call the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. They will be saved. Just calling the name of Jesus Christ, they will have eternal life. And the Spirit of God is working. And we have a great challenge to continue. And you have a great challenge to continue in this nation. We need to pray more as God encourages people, encourages young people for the ministry of the Lord.
And we are doing that in our own country. I'm, I'm trying to do that. I'm asking God to help us so that we'll have more people prepare for the kingdom of God. Because we want to tell the love of Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of God will, will enable us to, to do the things that we ourselves cannot do at all. It is He, through us, can empower the work of God. May the Lord bless each one of us, and we have a great responsibility all over the world in this nation. And I was talking with Pastor Mark. This nation has the foundation of Christian gospel, and it needs to continue that. It has a lot of infrastructure establishment that's good, but the gospel has to come back. And there are, there are infrastructures established in many ways. There are many, many big churches. Maybe they don't have people. But God has to bring a great revival across the churches and denominations. So that people can come in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the power of God. They have a mission to reach to the end of the world. May the Lord bless each one of us. Thank you for this opportunity to share. And God will help us to accomplish the work that he has begun in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, listen, um, not only when you call upon the name of the Lord would you be saved, but you could call upon the name of the Lord right now and get saved from whatever problem you got. So why don't you just go ahead and call out real quick here. Huh? Come on now. Go ahead. Lift up your voice and shout to the Lord. Come on. Lift up. <laughs> no. 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 Some of you. Some of you just need you. Some of you just need to get honest and say, "Oh God, come help me now. Come fill me now. Oh God, come touch me now. I feel a little bit dead on the inside. I feel a little bit stagnant. I feel a little slumbery." <laughs> and the and the beautiful you say, "Lord, fill me with your love," and He does it. Lord, fill me with your presence, and He does it. Lord, fill me with your life, and He does it. Now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you. I'm gonna talk to you about about how to live in the realm that, that the Word of God has called us to come into. That Paul was just talking about, and that, and to do so, I'm gonna set this thing up here tonight with a story about a woman of God who was used in a mighty way in her generation to shape the nation of America and actually shape the actually actually shape. What's, what took place and is actually in some respects taking place in the church even right now today. And I, w I, I was told the story by one of the leaders of the Assemblies of God. And uh, so it, it's really a first-hand, it's a second-hand story but from, so, from a first-hand source, okay? And so you can really believe this. And this story is about Catherine Coleman. And I want to tell the story because I want, to, I want to emphasize tonight that you cannot stay in the realm that many of you get yourself into and be able to be led by the Spirit, to, be, to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost, and to move into a place where God can use you in the signs, wonders, and miracles that He has purpose to use you in. There's no way that Jesus can be revealed in your life when you're consumed with your self-interest. And I want, you to, I, want to, I want to help you be able to effectively deal with these things because there is a wave right behind self-interest and the wave that comes right behind self-interest is, is a demonic attack. Now I want you to listen to me. The reality of it is, is God is raising, He is absolutely at work raising up people 
men and women right now to stand in his place in the greatest move of the spirit that has ever existed. Catherine Coleman was one of the people who prophesied of this. Jack Cole prophesied of it. Other great men of God in the last generation of the last great move of God. A generation before this generation, before my generation if you would, they stood up and they prophesied of something that's spectacular. I mean I praise God for the miraculous and the miraculous isn't always spectacular. I live continually in the miraculous and I love it to always excel to the spectacular but God is about to do some things in these last days that you don't want to miss out on. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Because if you don't, you're going to continue to live the same life that you're living. You're living a pretty good Christian life. Okay? But it isn't really taking you into the realms of the manifest presence of God through your life. And what happens is at least you're set up. Many of you, some of you I'm talking to tonight. At least you're set up in a position where when the anointing of God begins to flow and operate. At least you can receive a little bit. And some of you, come on now. I'm I mean, it really, truly is just a little bit. And we don't want that. We want you to be able to realize the full impact of the move of God. Listen to me. I'm talking to you tonight about God the Father's will, something that He has miraculously made provision for, so you do not have to li live without. You do not have to be left out. You can feel the full impact of the move of God in any meeting that you go to, and furthermore, begin to feel the full impact of the move of God that He's purposed to have, so that you can be used by God to take it to another level if you would. Now listen. <laughs> because I believe it describes what many people experience but on several, if you would allow me to use the word level, levels down. There was an Assemblies of God pastor in San Jose, California and he was responsible to take care of Catherine Coleman and he didn't like the woman. He didn't really believe that women should be in the ministry in the first place. And he, and he thought he was really not really excited about all the things that was happening because he was in doubt whether or not they were really taking place. Now listen to me. Hallelujah. Wake up everybody. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of yourself. I'm telling you the most important news that you've heard all week. Uh, it's more important than San Diego's got eight or nine fires. Okay. Far more important. And it's right about next door to you. I'm telling you right now nobody be falling asleep. If somebody, hey, the fire's right next door to you. <laughs> now wake up. Hallelujah. It's most important event in your life. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. <laughs> because knowing that the time and the seasons of the living God and the purposes that he has, we know that Satan is doing everything he can to stop anybody from going in this realm. And he's especially going to do everything he can to stop a church. Because I'm telling you, you can look throughout the history of time and you will see that God did what he did to change a culture through the church. And it is, exact, it is the hardest and most difficult event that exists within the frame work of what we understand the kingdom of God and how we understand the kingdom of God functioning now and it usually takes two or three generations in a Holy Ghost church to see the move even as it was two generations in the wilderness before people stepped into the inheritance because it's a, it's, it change, it's got to change the minds of people. Now what happens is many people are impacted infected by the unbelief and the religiosity of their parents and so because of that it goes to a third generation till something happens to where it, there is a severing of the old so that God can move his people into the realms of the new. Everything that God is doing, he's always doing a new thing and the new thing is the same thing he's always been doing. The extraordinary demonstration of his, of his wonderful power. So this is the passion of the Father and so that's why I preach to you this way. This is why my voice sounds as it does because it's it's Father's passion. See, I, my spirit has been hooked up with the Holy Spirit. And I respond to whatever he's doing. He does joy, I do joy. He does peace, I do peace. He does love, I do love. He does gentleness, I do gentleness. He does, he does anger, I do anger. I'm mean, asking holy anger though. It's not a, you know, human anger. Are you with me? Huh? And we could say indignation and then in a way we get a little separation. That ain't right. This San Jose pastor, he's... He's got to take care of 
Catherine Coleman, he's got to pick her up at the airport. He's got to take her to her, her hotel. He's got to pick her up at the hotel. He's got to bring her to the meeting. And he's got to take her from the meeting, take her back to the hotel. He's got to wait on her. And because he's a good AG man, he's going to do what he's told by his commanders. Bless his heart. So he takes Catherine Coleman, picks Catherine Coleman up, brings her to the meeting. And he's supposed to also responsible to escort her out onto the platform. She gets in the car and say no word, didn't really say anything. He was polite, but really didn't say anything. She didn't say anything to him. He didn't say anything to her. And he took her, put her in, her, in, the, in the ready room, and he sat outside. And he was waiting. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited. What he didn't realize is that Catherine Kuhlman was in the room and she was pacing back and forth and she was calling God, calling out to the Lord to give her an, that anointing that he has given her, that he gave her as a mantle. And she was saying, Lord, I'm not going out there until your manifest presence in the realm of the anointing that you've given me is present. I'm not walking out there naked in front of the people. I'm not going out there and letting them see who I am as a human being. I'm not going out there and letting them see Catherine Kuhlman. This is how she spoke. I personally loved the woman and still admire her today. Because she knew the realms of God. She took up Jesus Christ on his invitation to come into heaven. And to live her life in heaven. And she said, okay, I'll do it. And because she was willing to do it, and because she wanted that more than a husband, some people just run around wanting a husband or wanting a wife. Some people just run around wanting a new car. Some people sell out for such cheap little stuff. That new car is going to be rusty and scratched up inside of 10 years. And then you've got to have yourself another new car. And then it's just going to go on until you die. And I pray you don't have the money to get one. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you want one, I pray you can't have one. If you don't need one, I pray God give you one now. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And the pastor tells the story that all of a sudden, as he was sitting there, he felt the atmosphere change. He was just sitting there waiting, disgruntled for this woman to get herself ready so he can escort her out onto the platform. But he feels the atmosphere, the very air the very air that he's breathing, he feels it change. He feels the fire and the presence of God amplified far beyond. He knew it was the presence of the Lord, but amplified far beyond anything he ever experienced. Why? Because there was a woman who knew how to make the transition. There was a soul on the earth. There was a person on the earth that knew how to step out of just an anointed realm into a mantle. I'm telling you right now, I want you to begin to understand how to step out of the self realm into the realm of the anointing. I want you to understand that you are being bombarded by all kinds of things. And it's time for you to recognize you, do, you don't need to live under that harassment. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. It's not only talking about salvation, it's talking about the intervention of God to come and take you out of whatever discouragement, whatever harassment, whatever pain, whatever anxiety you live in, where you're trying to make it happen of yourself. Relax. I'm telling you right now, turn your heart towards heaven, lift your hands towards heaven. Things will change. You do not have to continue in any kind of limited and powerless state. You don't have to continue. Some people are satisfied with a little teeny bit of God. And that is not right. That is not the sun uh, crying out from your heart. That's not the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth would be wanting everything that God has and being so desperate for it. You'll hang on. You'll, 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 you'll wrestle with it if you would. You'll, you'll, you'll desperately pursue these things until all of it's realized. And then those things that you now have responsibility for, you won't neglect them. And those things are just keeping yourself in the love of God. <laughs> and Father has empowered us. And I'm going to talk about this realm. I'm going to talk about this realm. I'm going to talk about the fact that you can come into a meeting tonight. And it can be hot. And you can be tired. 
and you might have fiesta and you feel like siesta and, and what happens is now your body has greater dominance over you than your spirit and it ought not be so. Too many people's bodies have dominance over their spirit and it ought not be so. Thus they are sick, thus they are afflicted, thus they are in depression and affected by the influences of their hormones and by the influences of their phys physiological uh, state, by their physiochemical state. It ought not be so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, uh, rather, the power of the Holy Ghost and the working and the operation of the Spirit of the living God that is on the inside of you should eclipse everything about you so that every dimension of your body and your being is ruled by the Holy Spirit. It's, the, your body becomes the servant, the members of the living God. Wonderful realm I'm talking to you about tonight. I'm talking to you about a place that many people neglect. If you've ever experienced the manifest presence of the Lord, then you're without excuse. I'm going to tell you, there are many people who experience the manifest presence of the Lord and they're willing to live without it. They're willing to come to the meeting and just yawn and, and, and lift a one hand and say hallelujah and never have heaven touched a soul. Oh, that is a dangerous place to live. Very dangerous place to live. And it's the status quo of the churches of America by and large. And it's why we are slumbering and sleeping. And why the kingdom of God is not being absolutely advanced. 120 sold out people turned the world upside down in less than a decade. And we're sitting around here with uh, the millions of people that occupy the, the chair in the church today in a miracle of, of, of 300 million plus, I'm telling you. It can change overnight if you would be willing to say, no more will I be denied. No more will I allow myself to be hindered from this wonderful glory and interaction with the living God. I'm going to understand how to call because I know he'll answer. I'm going to understand how to ask and then know how then to receive. There is a realm that you submit yourself to. Catherine Kuhlman could have uh, developed her life and practice just walking out there and letting everybody see who she is as a human being. Just, just being who she was and letting everybody come to know Catherine Coleman. But early on in her life, she decided, I'm not going to do that. I want Jesus to be revealed in my life and I'm not going to have anything else. And I'm going to tell you right now, listen to me. Had she not made that decision, she would have never come to the greatness that God brought her to. Because God, the Holy Ghost, is here to glorify Jesus. Not you, not me, not anybody else. He's here to glorify Jesus. He's here to reveal Jesus. He's here to make him known. He's looking for some people who say, I just want to know this realm of heaven. I want to know this glorious place. I'm telling you, the anointing is something so sacred. Father said you don't make anything like it. If you make anything this after a similitude, he said you would be corrupt. To be karat in the Hebrew language is to, be, is to be cut off in the worst kind of ways. It is to be cut off to where that you have no way back in. It is an excommunication beyond. To be karat, you be cut off. It's no way back in. Because it kind of goes right along with what Jesus said. Concerning, you can say all manner of evil against the Father be forgiven you. To say all manner of evil against the Lord Jesus be con con forgiven you. But if you say anything against the Holy Ghost, you will be caught, cut off. There's no way to, for you to be repent, get forgiveness. It won't be forgiven you, not in this world nor the world to come. Don't mess with the sacred anointing oil. Don't mess with the sacred things of God's presence. The holy come in now. Here we've got this opportunity. At one point in time, Everybody had to go to Israel to present themselves before the presence of the Lord, for the presence of the Lord was only found there. Presence of the Lord, the manifest presence of the Lord was only found there. Everybody else had to just walk around in the stuff that many people that, are, that have the opportunity to walk in the glory of God are willing to go ahead and, and allow to exist in their life. Before, they had no choice. They had to live in all of those things. They had to live in all of those problems. They had to live in all of that upset. And if you wanted to get anywhere near the presence of the Lord, you had to go present yourself before God at three times a year, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And then you got to experience some of the presence of the Lord. And there's various stories written about it in secular history where people describe it. Josephus described it. Some of the events are described in the scripture. 
I mean, when, you know, when the tabernacle, for example, during the days of uh, Solomon were built, the power and the glory of God was so strong that all the people shouted with a great shout so that the nations beside them shook because they were touched by the presence of God. Somebody said, why do you shout? Because I'm touched by the presence of God. Sometimes I ask God's people to shout and it sounds like roller derby. It sounds like roller derby. It doesn't even sound like the shout, a great shout at the football field. It sounds like people uh, shouting uh, in a roller ring. I mean, that's a weird kind of shout. You know what I mean? It's roller derby time. People are shouting. It's voice of humanity. It's not the voice of heaven. Nobody's going to be changed by it. It's not the sound of heaven. It's the sound of heaven that changes the lives of men. It's the sound of heaven that changes the heart of men. My, the sound of my voice will change no one. Huh. The sound of your voice would change no one. There is a realm of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, these things pass knowledge. They pass the human ability. A lot of people hear these things they don't hear right and they just feel like, oh, how, you know, how terrible I am and what a loser I am. What is it taking me so long? Forget about why it's taking you so long. Just don't let it take you any longer. That's the more important point. You say, why is it taking me so long? I have no idea. But just don't let it take any longer. Don't sit there and think about the past and get yourself all bummed out with whatever the pride of life is, is trying to claw you into, a prison to hold you into for the rest of your life so that you're 99 years old and you still are saying, what's well, taking me so long? Let us come to an end right now. Let us understand that there is a realm of heaven that you can access by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that there is a realm of divine glory that is available to you if you're not willing to, to be left out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? I, 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 can, I can talk about every time, when most times when people are beginning to worship and praise, I can feel it, where people are just, it's just coming out of their mouth. It's not coming out of an unction. An, uh, word, the word unction is a word that we use synonymously with anointing. And it's a very strong word to express the, uh, the anointing because unction speaks of great motivation. It speaks of a great inspiration. It speaks of a current, a current that takes you away. Now, somebody can just say, well, you know, it's hot and it's tired and I've just fiested and I feel like siesta and, you know, and I'm just overwhelmed. Well, you know what? You actually might be influenced by the atmosphere that goes on created by demon spirits in this world and in this place because this is vacation center. This is a spirit of apathy and the spirit of just casual and quiet is all over the place. It's the big vacation. I'm telling you, you're not on vacation. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight, not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I've come here to stand. And we ask asking you to begin to recognize with us that there is a place of the anointing. There is a place of divine power where we have ability to stop everything that Satan is doing. We have an ability to call heaven into a realm of manifestation on a level that people will shake under the power of the living God. But you and I as the body of Christ, are going to have to be dedicated to this realm. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to start a verse of scripture that it just, you know, it is a mind, it's a mind-blowing verse of scripture. It's 1 John chapter 20, verse, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. And I pray that you just go ahead and get drunk in the Holy Ghost. How many of you know how to get drunk in the Holy Ghost? Tell the truth, because I might actually come up here, actually to come up here and demonstrate. Tell the truth. How many of you know how to get drunk at the Holy Ghost? Would you please raise your hand? And I'm going to see all the volunteers to come up and demonstrate. Hold them up there. Okay? There are just a few people that just seemingly don't know how to get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Well, shouldn't you want to? And when we say that, we're talking about being overwhelmed with joy and overwhelmed with love and overwhelmed with peace that every human state that we know about, all the things that would otherwise try to hold us into sorrow, Sadness. Did you know that sorrow and sadness flees away from the presence of the Lord? Did you know that the redeemed of the Lord have returned and come to Zion? But I'm going to tell you that joy and gladness is only in Zion. And there are a lot of people aren't living in Zion. So I hope you come run unto Zion. I'm telling you, Zion is a place that you have access to by the Spirit. Zion is the holies of holies. It's a place that nobody was allowed to go except for just a few anointed people. 
And now God has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. Everybody gets to be a part. Everybody individually, singularly gets to be taught of God. Everybody, everybody individually has to have the, the possibility of having everything that belongs to the Father. Put in their life and manifested in their life. It is too good to be true in most people's minds. It goes beyond the human intellect to be able to conceptualize. But the Holy Spirit's here to cause us to see what eyes not seen. Hallelujah. To hear what ears have not heard. Hallelujah. To understand what's never entered into the understanding heart of man. Hallelujah. To find this place. Once you find this place, once you come into the house of the Father and you begin to occupy this relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll never want to live your own life again. And the world be changed because of it. Everything, about, everything around you be changed because of it. Hallelujah. This abundant life will be on you that people will say, uh, we heard that you know the living God and that, he do, and that you dwell in his presence and we want to go and, and, and meet him too. I'm telling you, I am on a mandate and a mission. And my mandate and my mission is to feel, listen, to feel, listen to me, to feel up. Not only this building, just to start with, not only this parking lot, but to fill up the stadium of San Diego, California. Listen, I am on a mission to see the power of God so sweep that this, this planet, beginning with this region, that I am going to pursue it with everything that is with me. God has given me a faith for it. And he has also given me a design and show me some things that's got to happen. Understand, it has been easy for God to use the one. Reinhard Bunke just uses his family. They go everywhere and they've not been stopped. Carlos Anacondia uses his family and they go everywhere and they've not been stopped. What God gave them to do is just dependent upon their own obedience and their own responsibility and their own consecration. But God's got a special thing he wants to do in the church. And I'm telling you, Satan is so effective in his strategies of stopping it and not allowing it to take place because God's people have not had enough insight and wisdom to, begin to, be, uh, to understand Satan's devices and be taken out right and left and center. And religion has become more important to them than anything else. And I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that relationship becomes more important to you than anything else. And that you will not allow yourself to be beat up. You will not allow yourself to be sorrow and sadful. I mean, sad, sad, sorrowful and sad. Or any part of that stuff. The redeemed of the Lord has returned and come with singing unto Zion. You want to come to Zion? You want to step into the heavenly realm? You got to come with singing. Huh? You got to come with a divine unction. Listen, God says he has given to us his anointing. He has given to, look, we have received an anointing from the spirit of the Lord. We received an anointing from the Holy Spirit and we know everything. Wow. Somebody said, my goodness, you must really do well on your test at school. It's nothing to do with it. We know everything about the realms of God. God has given us the capacity. God, listen to me. This is mind-blowing. This is far bigger than if you knew every detail of mathematics and every detail of physics and every detail of science and every detail of every aspect of how creation works and how it was brought into existence. This is far bigger than that. This is far bigger than any question you would be asked upon a test. God has given to us an ability. He's given to us an understanding. He's given to us spirit knowledge so that we can know everything about the ways of God. To know everything that, that eyes not seen, that ears not heard, neither has entered in the heart of men. But the Holy Spirit has come to reveal to us. He's come to take everything that belongs to Jesus, which is everything that belongs to the Father, and reveal it to us. And people sit in a religious realm and they hear it, but they don't do it. They hear it, but it doesn't go down into their heart where they hunger. Say, oh God, I want this in my life. And then we have, see, the Spirit of the Lord comes. And, you know, my dear friend Rodney Howard Brown came with this anoint, special anointing by the Holy Spirit to come stir up the churches in America to prepare them for a coming revival. God gave him a mantle. God gave him a mantle for the churches so that, that people could be touched by the presence of the Lord.
And so many people got touched by the presence of the Lord because they did not know how to access the realm. They were so stuck in religion, they did not know how to access this realm. And so here, the Lord in His grace began to use ministers. And it wasn't just Rodney, because God diversified it. And there were so many people that God instantly rose up. And Carlos was already moving in it, in that same manifest glory before uh, Rodney came. But Carlos was for, uh, the, the, uh, for the lost more, and, and, and Rodney was more for the churches. And then God began to multiply that and in such a way to where that everybody could begin to experience something that they were imprisoned against. All they thought was we were just supposed to stand around and sing, he fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. And sit down and listen to a message. Get up and go back home and do the same thing that they've always been doing. There's been no change. No ability to move in the Holy Ghost. No ability to have these things that the Word of God talks about. Just a normal, everyday life, living as mere men. If you get sick, you've got to go to the hospital just like everybody else. You get a headache, you've got to go to the aspirin just like everybody else. Huh? You have sadness or sorrow, you've got to sit there and be depressed just like everybody else. Hmm. You're harassed and tormented, you've got to just come under it just like everybody else. Just true, just too, too true, just, just too, too true. It's the way things have been. God has a fire that is burning in the midst of his church right now. He's giving you an opportunity. You get to choose whether you want to come into this opportunity or not. I might not be the most, I might, I might not be the most pleasing vessel to declare these things. Huh? I might not be the most, I might not be the vessel that is most easily to receive these things, but I'm the vessel that you're getting to hear these things through. And so hopefully the vessel doesn't matter too much to you. The opportunity and the call from God is what stances and situations and problems and threatenings and fears and all the issues of an everyday life in the United States of America where people have to wear teeth guards because they're grinding their teeth down from stress. <laughs> that you'll say no, uh-uh. I'm, a, I'm going to build myself up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and then keep myself over in the love of God. Why? Because perfect love does what? Does what it does. Somebody said, what's the sense of it? Keep myself over here in the love of God. What's the sense of it? I'm being strengthened. I'm being built up. I'm being strengthened more than Samson was strengthened when he carried away the gates of the city. I'm being strengthened more than Samson was strengthened when he took the jawbone of a donkey and he slew the thousands and the tens of thousands. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm being strengthened to go everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ and conquer and destroy all the works of Satan. I write unto you, young men, because you have defeated Satan at every point. Because the word of God abides in you. Yeah, that's what conquer means. Amen. That's what overcomer. We defeat Satan at every point. Amen. Hallelujah. See, what we're doing is we're, we are purging ourselves from the things that belong to Hymenus and Philetus. The false doctrines of people around us. We're purging ourselves from the influences of things that would try to impose itself upon us and cause us to live earthbound and earthly restraint. We're purging ourselves from these things to live over here in a heavenly realm because if you'll resign yourself to live in a heavenly realm, guess what, dear people? Listen to me. Listen. Hello. Listen up over here. If you will resign yourself to living in the heavenly realm, you'll get to speak out of heaven. You'll get to minister out of heaven. You resign yourself to living in an earthly realm, you sound earthy. Earthy, earthy, just a, you're, just a, you're just another voice among the seven billion. Just another, earthy, and earthy doesn't really, earthy doesn't really smell very well. It's corruptible, it's temporal. But if you resign yourself to living in heaven, if you, I'm going to tell you, living in the Spirit, living in the Holy Ghost is equivalent to living in heaven. He's the one who makes it possible. They're synonyms by, by virtue. It is only the Holy Spirit that makes it possible to live in heaven. He brings heaven to us. Hallelujah. He's, he, he's our access, hallelujah, into this realm. Oh, Masetela, oh, Limbak Lingokaya. I'm going after this thing tonight so that these words don't fall upon deaf ears. I'm going after these things tonight because I'm going to tell you right now, I have found this is how you can deal with pain. You don't have to be all your lifetime subject to pain anymore. You don't have to be all your lifetime under the restraints of fear anymore because there is a realm where you begin to move and flow in the Holy Spirit that everything has to come under the authority of the abundant life that is in Christ Jesus. My, it's a wonderful place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Microprint.
Zerinaya. Hallelujah. I want to read the scripture to you. I want you to just look at it with me. I want, you to, I want you to stare at this with me. I want you to realize that there is absolutely no reason for you to live under fear anymore. There's no reason for you to think that, oh no, if we do this, we're going to die. Or if we do these things, if we obey God, somehow it's not going to work out for us. Somehow we're going to lose out. We're not going to be taken care of. We're not going to have food to eat. We're not going to have the provisions that we need. Oh, dear people, you need not live under that fear anymore because the spirit of the living God has come. He's filling us with everything of the knowledge of the Lord so that we can understand perfectly how well God is going to provide for us and take care of us. We need no longer live under the restraint of a spirit of bondage. A spirit. And, and I, so many think, thinks that, well, because... I was born of the Spirit. I was born of the Holy Spirit. And I was given the privilege and the opportunity to live in this realm. That now the spirit of bondage is dead and doesn't exist anymore. So I don't have to worry. No, spirit of bondage does very well exist. The spirit of bondage is alive and existing. It's the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. It's the God and the prince and the power of this atmosphere. The God of this world. Tonight, you're, tonight, you got to recognize that, that there are so many things going on in your life to where that you are speaking to heaven and, and, and by the things that you've done, by the things that you participated with, you're speaking out to both angels of God and angels of darkness. They see whether or not you're going to spend your best on you or you're going to spend your best on God. And I'm really talking about your time and your affections and your energy. Huh? I'm talking about... I'm talking about you know, even your, even your finances. And of course, my goodness, there's a lot of people preaching on that. It seems like every channel I turn to, everybody's talking about the finances. And we need to talk a little bit about a couple of other subjects because they're very important as well. The hearts, the people's hearts and bitter affection. God has totally delivered us from fear. It shouldn't have been in our life. The influences of fear, yet they all over the place. The activity of fear, I, I, would, I would say that as much as created out of the realms of fear as on the side of darkness as is created out of the realms of love in the kingdom of God. And I would actually take and make the love of God the origin of every dimension of divine expression from God and into our lives and from our lives. It, the, the love of God would be the source of every good thing that we have, of faith. The, the love of God would be the source of, of, of mercy and forgiveness and every other dimension of those things that have been provided for us in Christ Jesus. As fear on the other side is, the, is, is almost as it were the primary source of every evil and tormentuous thing that Satan would try to afflict upon us and ultimately take us in under his power and domination with. We've been delivered from it. You and I need to just go ahead and say, well, well, I recognize that I've been delivered from it. And so now, now therefore, it should never more, ever again have any effect on my life. I'm building up myself in my most holy faith. I must keep myself over here in the love of God. And look at this next verse of scripture. And he says, the spirit himself testifies to our spirit. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, because, because he's saying to us, he's saying to us, you don't have to come under the bondage of fear. You, you've been delivered from it. You don't have to live under, this, under these strongholds and these influences of sin and death. You don't, because that's how he opened up the chapter. You don't have to live under these influences that would, that would keep you in any way held back from all that Father has for you because he's going to ultimately take us to the place of saying we've been predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son. He's going to take us to the place of saying that, we heir, that we're heirs of God and, and co-inheritors with Jesus. He's going to take us to the place of saying that of how that God spared none of his own Son. Uh, when we, if God spared none of his own Son, when we were enemies... How much more shall he also by him freely give us all things? He's going to tell us of the, that we're predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the first, seen to be the firstborn among many brethren. Observed to be. If we just take the, this dimension, 
that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everybody in the church and yet the reality of it is is everybody in the church is not coming under the influence or carried by the current of the manifestation we have to ask ourselves the simple question why and I'm giving you the explanation right now I'm going I'm dealing with you right now concerning where your affections and where your heart is and where your spiritual affinity is where your spiritual affinity is I see people swept by fear at an instant swept by fear under the control of fear instantaneously can take them they're so sensitive to it but then the Holy Ghost is moving with his glory and his love and they dead to it they cannot respond why because their members have been continually yielded to the realm of fear continually yielded to the influences that are purely earthly and purely human now I don't believe in a duality of nature but I tell you right now I watch people in the church live a duality of spiritual life and that is so wrong and I almost have I've almost got I, I cannot explain it scripturally scripturally the father clearly tells us one thing he too clearly tells us that we've been born from above that we've been made a new creation that we 100% belong to him spirit soul and body that we're his that we've been given the divine nature that we've been taken over by the Holy Spirit but to see the expression of it I can think about when I was a young man and older men would say, Mark, well, everything you're saying about the new nature and everything you think talking about oneness with God is true biblically, but it's not our experience. I can understand it now today more than I could then. Then I was just radical going, who cares about experience? Man, we're going to conquer the world. Surely there's a people of God who's going to walk with God. I think all the people, I think all the folks are backslidden and don't know God. I mean, that was just me. I'm 23 years old, you know. I'm going with God's word. Forget about everybody else. Amen. You preach like that, you're not going to have, you're going to have a quite a bit of turnover. You know? And here I am today looking at honest and sincere people with God. They don't know how to live the life of Jesus. They live a dual life. They live a dual nature. Such a nature is not supposed to exist. I, I, can, I, cannot, I cannot justify such a nature. I, and I... And I um, don't really want to tell you what my conclusion is about it. All I want to do is call people to God to come into this realm of faith to start living out the life of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I want people, and you're not going to do it as long as you're arrogant. And you're not going to do it as long as you're prideful. You're not going to do it as long as you think you know everything. While, meanwhile, mean, meanwhile, you've not come under the manifestation of the Spirit and done anything in the manifestation of the Spirit in your entire life. And yet, how deception is a terrible thing, isn't it? But I want you to understand, you're going to have to get over that. I'm talking to everybody here tonight. I'm talking to a lot of people that are watching me by web. I'm talking to people that are watching me by the YouTube. Listen, I want you to understand, there is a place. I know what's going on for the most part here. I don't, I, what I see it is as, I see this. I see the powers of darkness. I see the circumstances of life threatening you and stopping you. That's it. You do not know how to access the realms of the anointing to grow in the realms of the Spirit to be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of His might and effectively bust through all of those hindrances. And tonight, I am calling out to you by the Spirit of the Lord and saying to you, it should be no longer. It, God has, wants to work a miracle for you. Do you want the miracle to be worked? God is working a miracle for you. Do you want the miracle to be worked? And I wanted to just back up for just a minute. And, and before I go to verse 17, try to bring this together. I, I want to back up and I want you to look with me in, in John chapter 1 and verse 12. And I want you to see how easy it is. Because, so I don't care about what's going on in the past. I want you to grab a hold of the beauty of walking in the Holy Ghost right now. But I'm going to tell you right now, you can't sit and play video games all day and, 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 and wonder why you're feeling the way you're feeling. You can't sit around and watch television all day and wonder why you're feeling why you're feeling. You can't sit around and listen to Mick Jagger sing, you know, can't get no satisfaction and wonder why you're feeling like you're feeling. You can't go occupy yourself with the things of this world. You can't take fire in your bosom and wonder why you're feeling like you're feeling. Why do I feel dead to God and alive to the world? Why do I, why is it so hard for me to occupy myself with the things of the Spirit? Because if you're going to have the things of the Spirit, then you're going to sow to the things of the Spirit. If you sow to the things of the Spirit, and that, really, that verse of Scripture truly is in Galatians chapter 6 about what you're doing with your money. It truly is. 
But, it, but it's also about what you're doing with, because it's money and your heart so wrapped together. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, everybody can go ahead and say amen. amen. Or you can say, oh me, oh me's okay. Oh me, oh my. Amen if you agree and you're doing it. Amen says, I vow to do it. So be careful about amen. Are you with me? Amen I mean, means I vow to do it. Hallelujah. Ask yourself this simple question. Do you have enough anointing to change anybody's life? Then ask yourself this question. Do you have enough anointing to be sent by God to go and preach the gospel in the United States of America and see hearts turn? By the, by the hundreds and by the thousands. Ask yourself, do you have an, enough anointing by the Holy Ghost to go into a foreign land and see a nation changed? And then understand that God has given you that potential and that ability, but the choice is yours. Hallelujah. And it's going to begin by how you're able to now live in heaven now. How can, do you live in heaven? Can you live in heaven? Hallelujah. Be there. I, I tell people who are involved in music all the time, I said, you want to know how well and ready and prepared you are to sing in the Spirit and lead people in worship. How fluent does the flow out of you? The expression of the Holy Ghost, because the rest of it is just entertainment. It's for entertainment purposes only. There's no anointing over it. Said so next. You know, I'm going to be very honest with you. When I hear that, I wish it was on the radio so I could turn it off. I wish there was a plug, a master plug in so I could pull it. And it just all goes silent. True. True. And, and I, I just, I just, I want to, I want to worship the Lord. If I'm living over here in a life of worship, huh? And then, and then all of a sudden, you know, um, ACDC gets up and starts going off. I'm not interested. You know, I'm not really interested. If I'm living over in, uh, in the realm of worship and all the people, all of a sudden Christian entertainment gets up and starts going, I'm equally not even interested. If I'm living up here in the world and worship and Christians are getting up because they want to do a performance, they want to be heard, they want to get all right and sound good, not interested. Huh? Because why? It's messing with my worship over here. Come on. The God will sit out and never tell you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, why can't so and so sing the song like that other person? Because they haven't found the place where it was birthed. Nah. And Baba wants to have it. Well, Baba wants to give you the place where it's birthed. You have to get over your fear. Huh? You have to get over your torment. You have to give over, get over your compromise. You have to get over the things where you just live in this realm of being tormented and tossed. No more. Hallelujah. Where you just begin to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost and walk with Him. God's made it so simple. You know how simple God has made it? Can I tell you how simple God has made it? He said as many as would receive. John, John 1 12 says as many as receive. <laughs> he, gave him the, he gave him the authority that Bursa. See, everything in the realm of God is faith. In other words, you've got to believe it. And then believe is the first attribute of faith. Because belief takes, I believe, I hear the word, I believe it. I, that's true. But then all of a sudden I'm challenged as to whether I'm going to walk it out, whether I'm going to live it, whether I'm going to do it. That's where faith comes. It's the walking upon the water. I hear him. I know it's Jesus. I hear his voice. He's telling me to come. But am I going to step out? Am I going to step out and begin to move in it? This is where it gets radical. Ah, and then all of a sudden, am I going to be willing to accept the reality that he has given me the authority to be a son of God and that it's not something I do once a week. It's something I wake up in the morning praising him for. It's not something I struggle to have. It's not something I try to, you know, produce and get all anxious about. It's something that I just have and I rejoice in. Hallelujah. And I live in the authority of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I live in the beauty and the blessed relationship of interacting with the Holy Spirit where I ask him for something and he fills me with it. And somebody said, well, I asked him one time for a new car and I didn't get it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about asking him for joy and it's unspeakable and full of glory. I'm talking about asking him for love and it passes knowledge. I'm talking about asking him for peace and it overwhelms you. It's, you, 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 it's like being, I'm, look. Ann and I haven't been getting a lot of sleep. We've really been very, 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 very tired. We've been through a lot of things. Okay? But what happens is I step into the church. I mean, I went and took a nap, but all I did get tired. I just, all I did was get more tired. 
took a nap between service, but I just got more tired. But I step into the meeting, I get struck with the lightnings of heaven. Get, get, get yourself struck. You know, you know, if you get real sleepy, mm, <laughs> kind of lick your finger, take the light bulb out, <laughs> stick it in the light bulb. You get shocked, you're going to get woke, gonna get woke up. Huh? huh? Or you get real sleepy and you're driving the car and all of a sudden you find yourself driving in the other lane and the headlights are coming right at you, right? You're awake. You're awake for the rest of the trip, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you where now when you get struck by the lightnings of God. My goodness. <laughs> when you know, when, when it, 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 people, understand this, it is the relationship of the heart and that has developed. God has given us a new heart and a new spirit so we can have a relationship. But what if we put that on hold? What if we do it our own way? What if we live out our own lives? Ultimately, we've never activated what God has given to us. God has given us a new heart and a new spirit so that our heart and our spirit can be developed to have an affection and an interaction with Him so that everything that He's doing, we can participate with, where we can actually find, as it were, gears in the Holy Ghost. Huh? I got first gear. I just woke up. I woke up. Man, I tell you, I'm a mess in the morning. My hair is getting thinner, and so it goes in so many different directions. I, I look like different kinds of creatures, you know. My wife's got a new creature for me every day, you know. And But I got the first dot. I'm in first gear. And I'll run. And now, first thing as I do is I go around. I get into the Word. That's why that's why my life is. I go get into the Word. Hallelujah. I, I get myself so some mate or some tea or some coffee or something. I go get in the Word. And I get shouting, Holy Ghost, hallelujah, before, it's, before an hour passes by. I just found second gear. Now Papa's got me some things for me to go and, go and do, uh, both in the realms of the Spirit, the kingdom of God, and also in business. And now I get in the car, and the master is flowing out of me, and the presence of God fills the place. Presence of God fills my, fills, my, fills my car, fills my life. And all I'm saying is, Father, I just want to represent you. I'm a, I might go over with a bunch of disgruntled, unhappy people who are wrapped around the axle of the cares of this life. And I don't want to be, in, I want to just show them your love and your grace and your mercy. I want to be smiling and hallelujah. It's a wonderful day. It's Monday morning. Praise God. How you guys doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and here everybody give all their complaints and say, well, it's really not that bad. You know, and just, Huh? But I mean, you know what? I really, I, re I understand this realm. I understand this realm. Listen to me. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. I understand this realm of kick and pass. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me patiently. Kick and pass the hindrances that you create. I'm sorry. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I'm sorry that it's this way. I'm telling you the truth. I know what it means to kick past the hindrances that God's people create with their apathy, with their lack of engagement, with their bringing their cares and their troubles and their stuff into the meeting, where they're bogged down in a prison, a bondage of fear. And if I get real radical, if I get real radical, if I throw my coat off, as it were, huh? And I start worshiping God radically and I ignore everything that's going on. There will be a period of time where I'll pierce through a realm where heaven will come. Heaven will come and it will grab a hold of the hearts of every single person and rapture them. But it's, it's frightful because it's a battle. It's a fight. Why must one man do that? And why, and it's been, and honestly, look at the history of the church. It's been one man battles where God raised up a George Whitfield, where God raised up. I mean, think about the movings of God, how easy it is when people touch this realm. Jonathan Edwards is reading his sermon. Jonathan Edwards is reading his sermon. But he had found a realm in God where it did not matter what was going on with people. He read his sermon and the glory of God so shook the place that people were holding, hanging on to poles or anything else they could find the building so they didn't fall down into hell. It was such a manifestation of the power of God. I'm telling you, we're going to lay hold, I'm going to lay hold on that realm. And I, and I believe and I have faith and confidence that we together are going to lay hold of that, on that realm. 
And, and once again, I want you to understand, I know that there, is a lot, there are a lot of churches that babysit the saints, that hand out coloring books and teach you to color between the lines. That's not what my responsibility is in the kingdom of God. My responsibility is to say, come on, people, it's time for you to understand how to change the very atmosphere of your life. To change the very atmosphere of everything that you know about yourself. You, once you know this realm, and it begins just in very fundamental, simple ways, that you, you are unwilling to live your life without the manifest life of Jesus. Get rid of your religion. Get rid of your religion. That makes you okay why you don't have the manifest life of Jesus going on. Your husband knows how much Jesus is manifested in your life. If you don't, ask him. He will tell you if he's going to be honest. Your wife knows how much Jesus is manifested in your life. Your children know. I mean, come on, people. Whatever it takes to grab a hold of reality. I know that God, the Holy Ghost, can do great things with reality. He's the spirit of reality. And when we begin to encroach upon truth, we begin to participate with him and the miracle of change takes place. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You can either leave the meeting complaining or you can live here, leave here consecrated to hit the deck till heaven comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hit the deck till heaven's poured out upon your life. The old timers back in the holiness revival, they would say, we pray till the glory comes. We pray till the glory comes. And then when the glory comes, we stand in the glory. Hallelujah. Well, just try that. That's good. They didn't even know about the baptism of the Holy Ghost that they were saying that. Huh? Well, try that. Try that on for size. Changing the atmosphere of your life by being swept into the currents of the Holy Ghost. For as many people as, and now let me say it this way, give me the permission to say it this way. As many as have received, he gave them the power to be the sons of God, to be swept by the currents of the Holy Ghost into all the abundant life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, that's a faith realm. That's a faith realm. Listen, my grandmother read the Bible for the first time. Her daddy, was a, her daddy was a Quaker preacher. She read the Bible for the first time when she was 10 years old. She read it all the way through. One day I was living with her. She was like 83 years old. She comes out from the back room going, praising God. Hallelujah. It's real. It's real. It's real. And I'm going, what's real? Grandma. I'm like trying to do my studies. I was at the University of West Florida, Pensacola. I said, what's, what's going on? Healing's real. <laughs> Healing is for today. 83 years old. First time she read the Bible was 10. Took her 73 years to get into a realm of faith and believe in for one little simple thing. Until you believe it, you can't have it. Until you believe what I'm telling you right now about being swept in the Spirit, in the currents of the Spirit, you can't have it. But if you'll believe it, you'll begin to hear the voice of the Lord. He'll, sh he'll show you very basic things. He, there, it's like He begins to talk with us in very simple ways. Hallelujah. With just checks. But you can't have a check till you know the peace. Huh? A check is, a, is something that messes with your peace. Huh? I mean, God talks to us in very simple ways. And then he begins to take it to another realm and to another realm and to another realm. We find ourselves in the discerning of spirits. We find ourselves functioning in the word of knowledge because we've learned how to listen to his voice. We've learned how to be led by him. We've learned how to operate under a divine unction, under a compelling motivation, under a strong, irresistible inspiration. I've been so many times, and it's especially for me when I step into a place that God has given me a mantle for. I'm staying here because it's a discipline of the Lord. He's told me to. He said he's going to raise up preachers and ministers to go out of this place. And he's going to ultimately do it. It's going to happen. He's raised up a few, but he, God, Father's got bigger plans. I've got a mantle. And when I begin to flow in that, and function in that mantle, in going in, in, on to, into doing evangelism, and especially any kind of crusade evangelism, or, or in, in the things that God has given me to do, in, in, in ministry outside of the local church. You know, the gifts of the Spirit for me function in a, a little bit different way. And, you know, the thing about it is, dear people, what I want to say is this. You're going to have to be faithful and committed 
and persistent in what God has given you to do right now. To recognize that any impact is no small impact, it's a great impact. That your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ absolutely counts for the good or for the bad. If you bear false witness of the relationship because you're walking around cantankerous, dissatisfied, upset, half, sometimes you're going to be enjoying the praises of the Lord. The rest of the time, you know, it's not going to be that way. And it, we just don't know where you're at. We don't know whether you're in the body or out of the body. Literally, in the body of Christ or out of the body of Christ. The faithfulness, the commitment. To take, the value, to take the value of who you are and what you're doing very, very seriously. That it is no small thing to be able to occupy the chair that you're in right now. It's no small thing to be able to represent Jesus Christ as a member in, in particular in the body of Christ. To be, 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 to be very, very, very serious about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, no, no, let me just give you some quick, leaks, quick, some quick examples. Let's say uh, Bob and I are going to go tomorrow up to the Mission Training Center, so we won't be here on Wednesday. And let's say that we gave you the assignment to preach and minister on Wednesday. What would you do? Would you live your life the way you normally live your life on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday, or would it be different? I dare to say it would be different. I dare to say that you would study the Bible more. I dare to say you'd be crying out to God for a word. I dare to say that you'd be really wanting to be representing the Holy Ghost when you stood up to minister. Well, that's not truth. That's false. Because the Lord's going to see you functioning in a way that you're not supposed to be functioning. Huh? He's going to see a, a, a life altered based upon a wrong motive. Yeah, because you're responsible really already as a member in the body of Christ, already to be prepared unto every good work, already to recognize, wait a minute, I am supposed to be faithful to God to give myself to sowing to the things of the Spirit, always being prepared and built up to flow and operate in the anointing. And so now I'm going to do it just because I'm going to get up in front of the people that I'm doing it only for the purpose of the people. I'm doing it only for the purpose of, of, what, of, that, of that particular unique opportunity. And it, and it, that's not right. It needs to be for the purpose of God. I'm doing this for you, Lord, because I want to be prepared. I want to, be, I want to take serious my responsibility to be ready now to give a word of testimony to anybody you bring in my path. Because, see, the Spirit of the Lord has come upon us so that we might be able to stand in the presence of the Lord Jesus and fully give a representation of who he is to whoever God brings our way at any given time. Now, this changes the motive of your life. This is all of a sudden, oh, what carefulness. Oh, what consistency. Oh, what no more excuses for you. Oh, nobody's going to listen to your excuses anymore. Oh, but please, pastor, listen to my excuses. No, don't want to hear them. Oh, but you don't know. Oh, well, I don't care to know either. This is what God's called you to do. You're missing out on the best things. You're missing out on the best things when you're not giving yourself over to interacting with the Holy Spirit, to, to knowing Him. When I, and and it, isn't, it isn't so much uh, the way we, I believe, I, it, I, I don't believe it's the way that we conceptualize much of what we call prayer. Because I've discovered early on in God that the Holy Spirit sweeps me into a current of prayer. Recently, the Holy Spirit swept me into a current of prayer. I prayed four days. He swept into a current of prayer. If I stopped praying, immediately it would kick back in. There, 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 there's a current where the Lord would, I'll feel trouble. And when I feel trouble, it's because, when I feel troubled, it's because there's trouble. And it's not necessarily my trouble. It's trouble somewhere. It could be a trouble of a person. It could be a trouble of a church. It could be a trouble of a nation. It could be a trouble of a situation. And so when I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, I'm overwhelmed by peace. Okay? Praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm flooded with the glory of heaven. If I stop praying, I can feel the trouble again. I don't want to feel the trouble. But what if I haven't ever lived committed to walking in the peace? Then I wouldn't even know the difference, would I? 
If, what if I lived all the time really with a troubled heart? And many people live with a troubled heart and they're anesthetized to it. It is the way that they live. This is a common feeling. So if they felt they could never feel a trouble, as it were, because they've not resigned themselves to living in the Spirit, living and walking in the current of the Spirit. You know what the current of the Holy Ghost is? Joy. The current of the Holy Ghost is peace. The current of the Holy Ghost is love. The current of the Holy Ghost is meekness. The current of the Holy Ghost is temperance. The current of the Holy Ghost are all of these things that we call goodness. Let me say this to you, Pentecostals. You're supposed to be filled with the Spirit every day. You could ask the Holy Ghost to pray through you with a rabo supravaganana and lose the English language every day, every day. Lose it. Now I'm going to ask you an honest and sincere question. I want you to be honest with me. Because the Lord's looking at you. Do you want this? Because I want you to understand, God the Holy Ghost wants it for you. He will do it instantaneously for you, but you've got to want this. Right. Now, if you want this in his sincerity and truth, and to, this, tonight, right now, at this moment, everything changes. Amen. If you don't really want it, everything's going to remain the same. So therefore, the events of what happened testify where your heart is at. So you say, well, what am I going to do concerning the condition of my heart? Cry out to God. Just cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm not sure about the condition of my heart. I think I might be lukewarm. Do you know, I don't even have to think that for a second. I have never thought for a single second that I'm lukewarm. You know why? Because I'm constantly on fire. I'm passionate. I'm full of the fire of God. I'm so, I, I live desperate for the things of the Spirit. I lay hold on these things that the, that the Father has made available. I don't want you to be able to think for a second, I'm lukewarm. If, it, if I were pulling on you tonight by the Holy Ghost and saying, if any of you are lukewarm then tonight, let's see a change come in your life. The power of God is here, ready, available to baptize you in His glory and in His fire so that you'd be red hot on fire in the fire. I want you to already go, I'm on fire in the fire. I want you to already be on fire in the fire. Amen. Instead of seeing the cares of this life upon your life, the burdens of, and pains of this life upon your face. Ready to see Jesus. Ready to see Jesus. The authority to live the life of Jesus. The authority to live not as, not as a child that, differs nothing from, not, that does not differ from a servant but to live in the sonship as an heir of God, functioning in the airship right now of heaven. I'm going to function and continue to function tonight as an heir in sonship, and I'm going to see everybody in this place supplied with a supernatural anointing. Now, here's what's going to happen. Let, let, me, just, let me describe it like this. I have to too many people in my life. And, and, and this even goes on today. Where they have some kind of a disease or a sickness. When they come into the meeting, within a few minutes, the sickness and the disease and all of its symptoms do not operate. They're completely, they, they, the pain is gone. The symptoms are gone. They're completely healed. As soon as they leave the building, they come back under the pain, they come back under the sickness. And they live like this. Now, I want you to understand, that is a testimony of how many people live spiritually. They come in here, they come under the influences of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They're swept into this glory realm. And then they leave and they go right back into the problems and the harassments that they were in before. Tonight, I want you to believe that God, through Christ Jesus, has given you the authority to be sons of God. It has given you the authority to be swept into the current of the Holy Ghost. And that no more do you have to come under that lying power of darkness. No more do you have to be swept under 
the currents of this world. No more do you have to be overwhelmed with the circumstances of life. Now, what's going to happen is hunger will begin to lay hold on this. Hunger. I want this. I can feel hunger. I mean, you can feel hunger in many people's lives. I can feel that some people aren't very hungry at all. They're more tired. They're, the, the domination of their body has greater impact than the disposition of their spirit. We want you to begin, we want you to begin to interact with the things of the Holy Ghost and understand that wonderful dimension of the spiritual being that you are. God is spirit and he's made you and I spirit beings. And when we begin to that's the first time we begin to hear our spirit. Begin to interact with our spirits. The Holy Ghost talking, but out of our spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in, by many, it's called the real you. Because Paul said, if I depart from the body, I'll be present with the Lord. To be present with the Lord is to be absent from the body. He didn't leave any part behind when he left his body. He went to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. The inner being, the spiritual being, Alastokotamai. There's something far more important to you than your physical body that you spend a lot of time with. It's going to be, it's going, it's going to, it's going to lay down and be buried. Praise God. There's a, there is a day of resurrection for it. But I'm telling you right now, it's going to come up a new body. It's going to come up an immortal body like the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one you're wearing right now is going to be put off as you put off a garment. Amen. As you take off a garment, it's going to be put off. Why spend so much time with your body? It's the temple of the Lord. It's for the purpose of God, the Holy Ghost being manifested and revealed through. It's for the purpose of Jesus being glorified through. That's it. Glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are his. When, why, why, why don't we go ahead and make a shift here tonight? And this is the point. There's going to have to be, you're going to have to make a shift from living in, in a natural realm dedicated to the things that you can accomplish in this world. Hypersensitive to your bodily functions and your bodily needs. Why don't we just go ahead and say, wait a minute. The body is for the Lord. Its whole purpose and, and, and opportunity is for the power and the glory of God to be made manifest through this body. And now what's more important to me is the activities, the actions of the Holy Ghost in my life, who's not going to so much be functioning, he's not really functioning as it were in the dimensions of your body, if you would. He's functioning in the dimensions of your spirit. What's going on in your spirit? Your joy, your peace, your confidence, your boldness, your faith, your love. To be taken, swept in the current of his love. That's how you deal with your enemies. Swept in the current of his love. Swept in the current of his love. That's how you deal, deal with fear. Swept in the current of his joy. That's how you deal with the opposing things that otherwise would overwhelm your heart and you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to stand up against them they just take you out cause sorrow and sadness and doubt and concern and discouragement For the Holy Ghost himself testifies to our spirit. Testifies, saying, you son of God. You son of God. God's giving you the authority that is in Christ Jesus. He's giving you divine power over all the works of the devil. He's giving you the ability to stand in the realm of faith, of his provision, faith, of his protection. He's, he's giving you the ability, the access, live over here in the heavenly realm. So he's testifying. 
He's testifying good things, not bad things. I couldn't stand it for somebody to get up and testify. Well, we're going to have an opportunity for everybody to testify. And then somebody's going to get up and testify bad things. When, you, when you're going to get up and testify, you can get up and testify what? Good things. You're going to tell what? God has done. Holy Ghost bearing witness here. In other words, he's testifying to our spirit of what God has done. Will you listen to him? Could you listen to his voice? Could you hear his voice? Would you be swept into the current of things? The atmosphere of your life has got to change first. I'm here tonight devoted, about, devoted to the atmosphere of your life changing. And listen, what happens is there's points where I begin to speak and I begin to challenge you. And what happens at that crossroads, if you're not willing to change because God's revealing your heart, you're going to get upset and you're going to get discouraged or sad. It's like, mm -hmm. here's a common thing that's been said in the ministry for years. When, we, the, when God the Holy Ghost begins to minister, you're going to be sad, mad, or glad. You're going to be sad if you're like the rich man and you don't want to sell all that you have to come and follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. You're going to be mad if you're like the Pharisees and you don't want to hear another rebuke from heaven. Right. It's true. Yeah. You're going to be glad if you're humble before the Lord, wanting change, wanting everything that he yeah. has for you and saying, okay, tonight it's going to be different. See, the pride of life won't let you do that. Pride of life will say, oh, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I? Why can't I? It's pride of life. The Holy Ghost isn't going to be there. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is contrary to the Father. I hear the word of faith and I go, that's for me. I want that. This is what God's going to do in me. The Holy Ghost is testifying to you and me. This is what God's going to do in you. This is what the Holy Ghost is. Here's what the Holy Ghost is. Here's what the Holy Ghost is. He's not whispering either. I know sometimes I say that the Lord has whispered to me because that's the way he put it in my mouth. The Holy Ghost is going, saying to my spirit. And, 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 and my spirit has more impact upon me because I've given myself to this. If you sow the spirit, you have life and peace. And, you know, you sow the spirit, you, the spirit reap this wonderful realms of, of the life of God, which we call endless life. And it's endless life beginning now. You can have it now. Holy Spirit says, testifies to me. I'm a son. And he says, because you're a son, you heir. Everything Father has is yours right now, not later. Uh, I'm an heir and don't have to wait for God to die. Because he ain't going to die. I'm an heir and I received it because I came into sonship, not because dad died. I received it because it came into sonship. You understand Galatians? You understand Galatians chapter 4? You understand Galatians? I'm on Godiah. You understand Galatians chapter 4, 7? I'm an heir because I'm an heir because I came into sonship. You're an heir because Holy Ghost is saying, you, Holy Ghost is saying, you're an heir. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Can you, can you hear him on Monday morning? Can you, can you hear him late Friday night? Holy Ghost is saying, you're an heir. Holy Ghost is saying, you're co-inheritor with Jesus. When he's saying, I'm co-inheritor with Jesus, he's saying, everything that Jesus has is yours. See, the Holy Spirit has come. He came to each individual He's not only with us, he's in us. Listen, he's right here. I know him. Do you know him? You need to get to know him. He's your guide. He's your teacher. He's your comforter. He's your help. I'm, I, listen, I, I want to grab a hold. I want you to grab a hold of this. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. I ain't telling you he's with you. I, listen, I, it's about everybody I'm looking at here tonight. He's with you. And he's in you. Both. And it's time for you to stop living a dual life. It's time for you to start paying attention to him. He's with you and he's in you. Hallelujah. 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 I was telling a preacher not too long ago, I said, because he, he has this, he, he, he loves me, he has, you know, respect for the things that the Lord has shown me in, in the Word, and God used him in so many tremendous ways. And I was just telling him, I said, but look, my dear brother, I'm, the bottom line of it is you've got to grab a hold of this man. God has given us a divine nature. We've escaped the corruption that is in, through, that is in lust. Uh, it, it, it is the corruption that is, uh, through, that is in the world through lust. And I'm just laying it out. We, we, we've, been, we've been made new. He said, give me a break. Open up your eyes. Look at the church, man. You tell me they're not living like the devil. I said, that's a different issue. No one's chuckling. Everybody's quiet. 
Mm -hmm. Where's your passions? Where's your thirst? Where's your deep desire? God, the Holy Ghost is ministering our passions in heaven. Our deep desire is in heaven. Our affection is in heaven. We need to be conformed to his image and conformed to his word and not conform to those things that we've allowed to exist in our life. We need to get grab a hold of ourselves. I will not allow myself to not live the life of Jesus. I will not allow it. I'm going to give myself to the Father's business. I'm going to give myself to the things of the kingdom. I encourage you, give yourself to the Father's business. Give yourself to the things of the kingdom. I encourage you to fundamentally understand how to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. I pray that you, it won't take you the next 50 years to finally ask the question, what does it really mean to deny myself? I pray it doesn't take you that long. I pray that it becomes very practical to you tonight. I'm believing God for revelation. I'm believing God for a visitation for every person. I know that many people in this place, that, that is a, it's become a reality to you already. But I want, everybody to be, I want everybody to be healed. I want everybody to get a miracle. I want everybody to have this realm of glory in God. You know, people, the people of the last generation said when they were flowing and, and operating in these great signs and wonders and miracles in the midst of just some of the most tremendous displays of the power of God. Stand on the platform and prophesy and say there's coming a great revival. There's coming a great moving of God where 100% of the people will live without sickness, will live without disease, and will live without sin. See, that's heaven to me. Some people are threatened by that. To me, that's heaven. To me, that's simply being swept in the current of the Spirit. But he's not going to force our will. He won't force us. But when we demand it, when we demand it of ourselves, see, we force ourselves. In other words, we demand it of ourselves. I'm not going to sit here and 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 interact with God without touching heaven. Too many people go to prayer, and all it is is just it's faithless. It's either it's, you know what I'm saying. There's no glory of God revealed. Don't do that. When you begin to pray, pray till you touch heaven, because heaven's there for you. <laughs> Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's, see, that's the church praying right there. That, see, hear that? That is the church praying right there. That's the sound of heaven right there. That's the church right there. Now I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, I don't, I don't mean to in, in, in interrupt you. <laughs> because that'll go right, that'll go right through the roof right now. I'm telling you right, that prayer right there, like that's the manifest presence of God on that. I'm going to ask you why you didn't have that at the beginning of the meeting. And I want you to determine that it's never going to be that way again. Because that same force, that's a, that's a sweeping force, that's a current. That was a current just now. That did not have to be that did not have to be in any way stirred up. It was just a current. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lay your hand on the person that's right by you and begin to continue to pray. Mambra 
Yes, 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 yeah, yes. Ah, oh, Father, I, I thank you for your fire. I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, oh God, that you compel us to come. You compel us to come. Father, I thank you the anointing of the Holy Ghost that burns with the fire of your presence that compels us to come. Father, we thank you for the love that constrains us, O God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Haraba baba ranande. Hallelujah. Haraba baba 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 riba satarana karananda yalala bashapaya. Hallelujah. Irraba baki rima mama namba mala manjara baba baki ranala babra mama mana nana manjara susu. Harreme meme dere babra mama. Jesus a Ramana. Irima mama mana ne de. Sikara mama baba rima baba 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me. Stand with me. Lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift your hands towards heaven, lift your voice towards heaven. Oh, yeah.
Let me say, here's what I hear the Lord saying. If you would be consecrated from this day forward to having your conduct and your demeanor when you walk into the house of God, taken and swept into the currents of the Holy Ghost, there is nothing that Father will withhold from you. There is nothing that Father God will not do through you. Every dimension of the wonderful realms of God. It does not matter where you're at in your walk with the Lord. It does not matter if you're young in the Lord or whether you've been around for many years. It does not matter where you're at. Should you give yourself over to the disposition of this love? Should you give yourself over to the disposition of His joy, which is literally the atmosphere of heaven in your life? Father has declared, and he says it right now, and I've heard it, and that's why I say with great earnestness when I begin to correct and when I begin to point out these various different issues and problems in some people's lives. Father is declaring this one thing. There is nothing that he will withhold from you. The maturation and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit will be without limit. And all it is is a simple commitment of your life and surrender to the Holy Ghost ghost to have that beautiful realms of his divine goodness of his manifest glory in your life this place of prayer this place of a lifting up of our voice if you cannot find this realm of prayer you'll not find the realm of life that I am talking about Jesus Christ himself ever lives to make intercession for us if prayer and intercession is so important to him there's something going on about that realm that may seem foolish to you but it's the power and the glory of God that's being manifested beyond all that we can comprehend or understand <laughs> I want you to receive right now a change of your spirit. Some people in here tonight, I hear God saying, there needs to be a change of the spirit. And that is a radical thing when your spirit needs to be changed because that means you need to be born again. Tonight, if you're not sure, if you've ever been born again, if you're not sure that you received a change of spirit, then I, we want you to come. We want to pray for you. And God will work a miracle of salvation on your behalf. Tonight, you may just simply be imprisoned. You may be in a situation where you've allowed things to oppose the will and the working of God in your life. And the things of your spirit haven't been right because you've not been willing to come under the control of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, it is God works a miracle for you. The change is here. It's now. It's yours. All you have to do, just lift your hands towards heaven and God work a miracle for you. Just lift your hands towards Him and don't be, don't, don't be reluctant. Don't be hesitant. The Spirit of the Lord must raise up a company of people. God, hear me. God wants to raise up those who know how to be led of the Spirit. God must raise up those who know how to be swept into the current of the Spirit. Those who will give themselves, as I was describing to you, to a place of prayer until the very atmosphere of their life changes, until the mantle that has been given to them is manifested and God has given us a mantle of His only begotten Son. He's given us a mantle so that we can put on Christ Jesus. We can be clothed with His glory. He's given us a mantle so that we can be filled with the Spirit. He's given us a mantle so that we don't live our life but His life. Tonight, make up your mind. Tonight, decide. Tonight, do not be at halting. Don't be between 
to opinions. I'm telling you, go, let's go ahead and move on with this. Yes. Yes. Divine opportunity. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It is amazing. I, I hear the music of heaven. Yes. I hear heaven playing music and instruments right now. It is amazing. It is amazing. God's love and His joy and His rejoicing over us. Oh, people, don't be condemned. Oh, people, don't be held back. Oh, people, don't look to yourself. For in yourself there will only be defeat. But rather look to Him. Oh, look to the Holy Ghost who is here tonight to sweep you away. Oh, look to the Holy Ghost whose purpose to make all these things a reality of your life. Turn not to yourself. Look not unto yourself, but look unto the living God. He loves you so much. If He died for you when you were yet a sinner, how much more now shall He freely give you all things by Jesus? Oh, just believe what God is saying. Believe what God has given. Have faith in God. Believe what God has said. Believe what God has said tonight. Believe what God has said. Believe that He has made you everything that He is. Making you one with Him. By causing you to be recreated in Jesus Christ. Don't let your, don't, don't wait, don't wait. Let your hand step towards heaven until you touch heaven. I see many people tonight, they've not touched heaven. That means that all you are doing is being, all you're doing is hearing but not responding. You just stay here until you touch heaven. Heaven's here for you. Don't be of a doubtful mind. Don't be unhappy. There's too many people here tonight, you're still sad and unhappy. It's as though you don't believe that God has said those things which He's spoken. I promise you, if you believe Him, He'll do those things which He declared. I promise you tonight, if you're sick in your body, He'll heal you. I promise you tonight, if you're diseased in your body, He'll heal you. I promise you tonight, if you're weak and, and, and feeble in your spirit, He'll make you strong. I promise you tonight, if you don't know how to touch heaven's glory, that everything will change and from this day forward you'll be able to. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, dear people, Dear people, we want, you to, we want you to just press in with us as you participate with the Holy Ghost. For signs and wonders, for miracles, and for a great outpouring of God, don't live another day. Don't waste another day on yourself, living for yourself. Determine in your life tonight that you're going to live for Jesus. Determine tonight that you're going to make the interest of the kingdom of God your interest. I'm hooking up in faith with the Holy Ghost and have an extended meeting this next, next Sunday, a week from tonight. Starting Sunday night, going Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night with evangelist Tim Hall and believing God to see an atmosphere of faith. Did you know that the atmosphere of faith begins with your life? Did you know that the atmosphere of faith begins with God's people's lives? You are responsible before God and I am going to put that responsibility squarely upon your shoulders and I am not going to allow you to ignore what God will hold you in account for what will make the difference as to whether or not a sweeping move of the Spirit of the living God takes hold of this region, takes hold of America. I sent Rodney a text a little bit ago and I said, Rodney, I said, man, God's giving you the helm of this thing. Do not let up. And I know the battle that he's going through. I know the fight that he's going through. And I praise God that there's been one man, two men, three men, one woman, two women, three women. that's been raised up to do it all, it says it seems. But I'm going to stand with them. I'm be right in the big middle of it. God needs, God wants, God desires to use His people. There is such strength in the body of Christ. There's such a wonderful realm of divine glory that has been made available to every person. And we want you to see the sacredness of it. And, we, and so you'll hear, the, you'll hear the pleadings of our of a heart, the desperation of our soul. 
as we cry out to you and try to show you the things that have prevented you and the things that you've allowed. Don't allow those things to be condemnation to you. Don't allow those things to be a sense of discouragement to you. But let them be the correction that it ought to be. And be a good son and respond and daughter. And respond to the corrections of the Lord and say, I see. No longer will I allow these things that would somehow hide the manifestation of the power and the glory of God from my life to exist anymore. No longer will I allow myself to live in an earthly realm and by no means a hellish one where there's sorrow and sadness, where there's depression and misery and torment. No longer will I allow myself to live in that. But I will take a hold of the power of God that has been made available to me so that I personally can live in a realm of heaven. God has given you power and authority. God has given you power. Tonight, if you've not received power when the, by the Holy Ghost coming upon you, tonight God gives you an opportunity to receive power as the Holy Ghost comes upon you. I look across this place tonight and I see the majority of people. You've received power already, but you've not known how to stand faithfully in this wonderful realm of divine grace. And I want you to take a hold of an ability tonight to be able to stand. God will not force your will. You'll have to decide that these things are more important to you than the other things that you've made valuable. I want you to set your heart with me on seeing a great moving of the, God, of the living God in this city. Yes. To see the yokes of sin and blindness of heart and sickness and disease broken off of people. But it's going to cost some, something. Are you going to let one man do it? Two men do it? One woman, one, one woman, maybe two or three women. And they're going to just leave the work to everybody else? Or will you stand up and take your place among the mighty? Will you stand up and take your place in this invitation that God has given to value and honor this wonderful divine opportunity as we stand here in the age of grace, the age of the church, the age of dispensation of the Holy Ghost? The age and time of the great outpourings of God. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we plead with you for, for your mercy. God, we plead with you for your mercy here tonight. Oh, God, we plead with you for your mercy. I want to pray with everybody who feels discouraged. You feel overwhelmed. Some of you, I want you to understand what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's sadness. Because God, just like the rich man, is telling you, you've got to leave something to come and follow him. And the rich man was sad. Because he had much wealth. You may be sad because maybe you've defined your life by something. Maybe these things are so important to you. But I want you to know if there's anything that God pointed out in your heart and upon your life tonight, don't be reluctant. Don't hesitate. Go ahead and consecrate. Just go ahead now in Jesus' name and take your place in the kingdom of God. Understand your assignment right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Understand your divine assignment right now in Jesus' name. I'm calling out to God to give you wisdom. I'm calling out to God to give you insight. I'm calling out to God to give you revelation so no longer will you halt. No longer will you stumble. stumble. No longer will you waver. In Jesus' name. Mombrunga dande briste. Monomba nangere sti paurnai. Libri bitu brama. Libri bitu ramonda si. Libri mo muristi. Libri mo mumrusi. Uri mamure saramonde. Libri mo mondore siro. Hallelujah. Libri mo mando serena. I just feel to stay here in the presence of the Lord. Just waiting on the Lord here with you for a while. Libri mo mando brene nambra daya. This is how I connect with the Holy Ghost. God told us to pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit.
in the Holy Ghost. When God poured out his fire upon the church, when he empowered us to be his witnesses, to do the things that we're supposed to do in representation of heaven, he gave us this special gift. Hallelujah. The special gift is very important for your life. If this, special, if this special gift is not in your life, God wants to put it in your life tonight. Hallelujah. And you and Gambroma Samra Nanganda Malarana Monday is something that you can depend on from here on out to hook up with this realm of glory that I'm talking about. Become as simple as you open and up your mouth. Amen. It's going to become as simple. Walking with God is going to become as simple as you open up, opening, opening up your mouth and saying something. Hallelujah. 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 Uh -huh. Walking with God is going to become as simple as you opening up your mouth and asking God to come and fill it. Oh, walking with God will become as simple as you yielding your heart now. My heart's yielded. Can you tell? Hallelujah. And it's fine for you to say that to me. My heart is yielded, can you tell? It's fine for you to say that to me. It's fine for you to say that to me. Say, my heart is yielded, can you tell? The Lord doesn't want anybody walking out of this place with a hurting heart. Hello? God doesn't want anyone walking out of this place tonight with a hurting heart. Listen to me. I'm going to say it again. Because the people with the hurting heart weren't really listening. If you were listening, you probably don't have a hurting heart. No, this is the Spirit. The Lord tells me. I can understand. I hear Him. I hear His voice. He speaks through my mouth. The Spirit of prophecy speaks through my mouth. Revelation knowledge. He wants to speak through your mouth too. He put the prophet in you, inside of you. Holy Ghost is with you and in you. Father doesn't want anybody living here with a hurting heart. He doesn't, you don't want, he doesn't want you to have unholy emotions. He wants you to have holy ones. See, hurt and pain is a prison. A sense of rejection and, and not being wanted is a prison. Not release you now. The prison doors is open, but you've got to want to get out. Some people are just standing in that prison. There are people all over the world in churches standing in that prison. I don't believe people in the world are standing in that prison and, and, and don't want to get out. I, there are people who love sin and they're just, they love unrighteousness. But I'm telling you right now, it doesn't take long to get burned out on sin. It doesn't take long to get burnt out on that kind of living. There's many people went out of the prison. Jesus. Jesus. I want you to start praying for one another. I want you to start praying for one another. I want you to start praying with me and pleading with me that God will be able to have his way in this community in this region, this nation. I want you to get a burden for this nation with me. If you begin to ask the Holy Spirit for one, he give it to you. If you begin to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, cause me to pray. Cause me to be able to hook up with faith. Cause me to see the vision. Cause me to see the seed of the great moving of the Holy Ghost that will grow into the tree and produce the fruit of it. Oh God. Take hold of the life of Jesus right now. It's yours. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. Free. Say no more dual living for me. Say no more dual living for me. No more dual living for me. 
No more living my life and having life of Jesus on the side. No more living my life and having life of Jesus on the side. I'm living the life that Jesus gave me. I'm living the life that Jesus gave me. That's real. That was real. That was faith. That was the word of faith. I heard the word of faith in here. That was the word of faith. That wasn't repeat after me. That was the word of faith in this place. Hallelujah. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. Hallelujah. I'm a, I'm gonna, I want you guys to get ready to worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. And listen to me. Everybody's going to visit two baskets. Over here on my right hand side, there's going to be an offering we're going to receive for Ball, Dr. Ball here tonight. Okay? And then over here on the left side, we're going to receive an offering for the ministry, for the church. There's things, God's given us so many things to get done. We've already got a bunch of stuff in here. Somebody brought the jewels. Like 10 pounds of gold. That's pretty costly right now. It's pretty valuable right now. Why don't you get, get an offering ready? Does that mean people got to run out to the car? You guys running out to your car? Oh, offering envelopes? Let me say it again. You want to do this. You want to do this. You want to, you want to participate in this tonight. There's a miracle in it for you. Anything you participate with in God tonight, you've been participating with this wonderful realm of heaven to be swept into the current of the Holy Ghost. There's a reward in it for, for you. There's a miracle in it for you. Right over here, this offering basket we're receiving an offering for Dr. Bell, Dr. Ball Krishna Sharma. Amen? And over here, receiving an offering for the ministry. You're going to visit both of them. You ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. I know some of you are still getting ready. See the crowd of God's glory in place? Come on, son. You feel the presence of the living God? Isn't it wonderful? If you don't feel the presence of the Lord, I'll break that thing off of you so that you can. And I'll pray with you. Anybody here, you're stuck outside. There's no reason to be outside. I want, somebody said, why can't you be happy with 90%? Because I'm going after 100%. It's not like I'm not happy with the, the, it's not like I'm not happy with the 90%. It's just I'm going to go after the 100%. I'm going to go after the 10%, other, the other 10%. Amen? Amen. I'm going to leave the 90 and 9 and go after the 1 in the meeting. Anybody have a problem with that? Jesus. We just come worship the Lord with you giving. Just start over here and work your way this way. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Kira ma 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 na na ni ni. Kira ma 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 na la la ru ma si ra ma i na. Kira ma ma na la la ber ma ni ya ti la la na na. Kira la la ber ebe ebre ma na 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 ne li. Kira ebe ba le ebre ma ma nu na na ma nu ni la la di la la ma de ra. Kira le ve le ebre ma 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 na na ma di na le nu. Kira ma ma la 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 bevri ma ma na na la la ge le ma na ma na ma bevri ni. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Just remain standing with us if you would. I mean. Just lift up your voice and praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. You so good to me. Oh, I love him all of the time. Oh, I love him all of the time. Oh, I love him all of the time. Oh, you so good to me. I delight myself in you. Oh, I delight my self in you hallelujah i delight myself in you i delight myself in you you're so good to me hallelujah <laughs> find a bunch of people hug them tell them that you love them bless them in jesus name if you're sick in your body, if you need prayer for anything, you're sick in your spirit, prayer for anything, you come, we'll pray with you. God will heal you. He'll touch you. Not reason, there's no reason anybody leave here sick tonight. There's no reason anybody leave here in pain or in trouble tonight. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great, great power. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. For the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Spirit. For the anointing that breaks every old. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father, for your love. For the great, great hour for me. For the fire of the Holy Ghost, for the wellspring, for the river. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord, for a great awakening, for a great awakening, for a great awakening, for a great awakening. For a great awakening. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost and power. Thank you, Lord, for the heavenly rain, for the showers of blessing. For the showers a blessing for the moving of the spirit for your showers a blessing. For your showers, for the rain of heaven, we love you, everybody. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 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 Non è una manna di sera, ma non è una nera, 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 Lift your hands towards heaven, Dami. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, speak peace to you. Peace. Peace. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Ha 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 Right now in Jesus' name. Uh, right out of your belly flows rivers of the Holy Ghost, baby. Right there. It's right there. Right, yeah, right, side, right there. Yep. Arabakaya. Right there. Rabokinakatakani Bokunakaya. Yep, that's it. Ashikaramon. Yep, that's it. Vailopokatai. It's a fire of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that is with you and in you. Ashipaudanai. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Ramama, Mamana. 
Lo rama ma ma nai nai nai. Lo rama ma ma nai nai. Yeah. Lo ma 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 nai ngu tasa dei ro te ri di. So lift your hands towards heaven. Wow. It's good to see you. Bless you. Father, we pray for your blessing right here in this life. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the wellsprings of heaven. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But now. But now. By our God. By now. By our God. To your life. That's through you. Thank you, Jesus. By now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, every good thing, every good thing heals you, and out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. Right now, out of your belly flows rivers of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Right out of your belly flows these rivers. Right out of your belly flows this present. Right out of your belly flows this present. Father, thank you for the anointing. Father, thank you for your manifest presence. Thank you for this life in Jesus. Thank you for this life in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for increasing the anointing. Father, I thank you for increasing in Memphis prisons. I thank you for your increase in the fellowship in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. abundant life in the fullness of your glory oh I will live in this abundant life in the fullness of your glory
the fullness of your glory. My will live in this abundant life in the fullness of your glory.
Bye. 